Welcome to a journey into the mystical world of celestial beings, ancient myths, and prophecies. Today, we're diving deep into the stories of Lucifer, Lilith, the Antichrist, Leviathan, and the Seven Princes of Hell. These tales, while ancient, still hold relevance today, offering valuable lessons and insights into the human condition and our relationship with the divine. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. On the same day, he also created celestial beings such as angels, archangels, and cherubim. Among these heavenly beings were Gabriel and Michael. However, one entity stood out for his beauty and grandeur, Lucifer. Despite his many qualities, Lucifer was consumed by pride, leading to arrogance and vanity. This pride, one of the seven deadly sins, led Lucifer to believe he was so perfect that he could create his own throne above God. To achieve his goal, Lucifer deceived other angels, leading to a rebellion in heaven. A third of the angelic beings joined him in this rebellion. However, they faced a formidable opponent in Archangel Michael, who led God's loyal angels. Despite transforming into a mighty dragon, Lucifer could not defeat Michael, who had God on his side. As a result, Lucifer and his followers were banished from heaven and fell to earth, where they were trapped in hell. Lucifer, once the most beautiful angel, was transformed into the hideous Satan. Despite his defeat, Satan sought revenge against his creator and targeted humanity, which was created in God's image. Satan, in the form of a serpent, entered the Garden of Eden and tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. This act led to the original sin, resulting in Adam and Eve being expelled from paradise. From then on, Satan devoted his efforts to turning humans away from God, making them sinners and preventing them from reaching paradise. Most people are familiar with the biblical story of Adam and Eve, the first human couple created by God. However, an ancient Jewish myth suggests that Eve was not the first woman. According to this myth, before Eve, there was Lilith. Unlike Eve, who was created from Adam's rib, Lilith was created from clay, just like Adam. Believing herself to be Adam's equal, Lilith refused to submit to him and chose to leave the Garden of Eden rather than submit to her husband. After Lilith left, God created Eve to be Adam's companion. Lilith, having rejected her creator, was demonized and considered a demonic figure. She was believed to have the power to cause disease in newborn children. To protect their children, parents would give them amulets bearing the names of the angels who tried to bring Lilith back to Eden. The Bible prophesies that a sinister figure, known as the Antichrist, will emerge as the end times approach. This evil being will oppose Jesus Christ upon his return. The Antichrist, a son of Satan, will disguise himself among men, waiting for the final judgment. He will use his influence to convince people that the kingdom of God does not exist and that the only world that exists is the one in which we live. By denying the existence of heaven, he will convince those who lack genuine faith in the Creator that hell does not exist either. Thus, without fearing hell, humans will become easy targets for the devil's temptations. The Antichrist will become stronger and more influential as the final judgment approaches. He will become an important public figure, and his words will win millions of souls for Satan's ranks. The Antichrist will proclaim the right to absolute freedom, and by denying heaven and hell, the idea of good and evil will also be ruined. Then, everything will be allowed. All the values preached in the Bible will be denied and considered dogmas of a corrupted church, which hinders human development with its shackles. The Antichrist will have impressive qualities. He will be an intellectual genius with great oratory skills, and his political ability will make him an unprecedented politician. A new religion will be born under the command of the Antichrist. This new creed will deny Jesus as the Messiah. The Antichrist will declare himself to be the true and only Messiah. The opponent of Christ will have the power to rule over all nations and will found a world religion. Some say that the influence of the devil will reach the throne of Saint Peter in Rome. The church itself will be used to destroy the true faith. Like wolves disguised as lambs, they will use the words of the Lord in a distorted way, only to keep men away from God. The Antichrist will use tricks in the form of miracles to take the place that belongs to Christ. He will mark people with the number of the beast, 666. When the son of perdition reaches the height of his power and many have already accepted his will, Jesus will finally return to save the souls of those who have not yet yielded to the temptation of Satan, and the end of time will begin. The epithet of Antichrist has already been applied to various historical figures such as Nero, Napoleon, Hitler. Luther, one of the leaders of the Protestant Reformation, infuriated by the directions of the Catholic Church, said that the Pope was working against Christ, which would make him an Antichrist. 
The statement still echoes among some followers of Protestant doctrines, who believe that the Antichrist will emerge in the form of one of St. Peter's successors. The term Antichrist has become vulgar and is now used to refer to all those who deny the divinity of Jesus, such as atheists, Jews, Muslims, and so on. But according to tradition, the true Antichrist will emerge where he is least expected, and by the time his true identity is revealed, it will be too late. According to the Old Testament, there is a giant creature in the ocean's depths. His name is Leviathan. According to the sacred text of Jews and Christians, like all creatures that walk on land, fly in the air, and swim in the waters, Leviathan was also one of God's creations. This creature is described in the book of Job, where God himself describes this colossal monster. The beast resembles a huge marine dragon. Men would be consumed by fear whenever they spotted him. No man is brave enough to dare to awaken such a creature, since the idea of defeating it would be nothing but an illusion. God himself describes the mighty Leviathan as a colossal creature, the bearer of incredible power. The huge monster creates massive waves when moving. His powerful mouth has dreadful teeth. His back is protected by rows of shields so close together that not even air can pass between them. Leviathan has a powerful blow that throws flashes of light. There's fire in his mouth and smoke in his nostrils. When this beast rises, even the most powerful run away terrified because swords, spears, and arrows can do nothing against a creature who has his chest as hard as the most resistant stone. Nothing on earth can compare to Leviathan's power, but such a creature owes its existence to God's desire, since like every human being, Leviathan can only have their food due to the grace of God. The beast was the inspiration for the English philosopher Thomas Hobbes in his work Leviathan. According to Hobbes, the man in his natural state, where there are no laws, tends to unleash an all-against-all quarrel. To eliminate this state of anarchy, there has to be a social pact where everyone relinquishes part of their sovereignty in a figure who has absolute power. This figure that would have authority over men would be the state, which due to its power before men, Hobbes compares with the gigantic biblical monster known as Leviathan. Satan is the most powerful demon in Judeo-Christian culture. His image as a red, horned creature with a trident is already crystallized in the popular imagination. His name means adversary, the opposite of all that God in Jesus represented. Satan is always in an opposite position to God in the struggle for the souls of men. Traditionally, Satan is associated with the figure of Lucifer, who was once a heavenly figure. Because of his pride, he rebelled against God. Lucifer convinced other angels to fight alongside him against the Creator, but this rebellion was stifled by the Archangel Michael. Together with his divine militia, he expelled the rebels and threw them from heaven. Lucifer and the other fallen angels began to inhabit hell. The leader of the rebellious angels was identified as Satan himself. According to some interpretations, Satan had taken the form of a serpent. He convinced Eve to taste the forbidden fruit, causing mankind to be cast out of paradise. Satan, when identified as the devil, assumes the personification of all evil. The Bible describes that one day, God was visited by Satan, the accuser. The Lord introduced him to Job, a man so virtuous and faithful that his soul would be out of Satan's reach. By God's opponent noticed that Job was only faithful to God because he counted on his blessings. He had everything he wanted. Satan bet with God that without his blessings, Job's faith would turn to dust, and he would curse God. Job was left with nothing. His wealth, servants, his prestige, he even lost his family. Satan lost the bet because despite all that suffering, Job refused to curse the Creator. But Satan's most famous biblical appearance is his encounter with Jesus, who had gone into the desert under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, where he would spend forty days and forty nights fasting. Seeing the hunger that Jesus felt, Satan turned stones into bread, but Jesus resisted temptation. Satan challenged Jesus to throw himself off a mountain to see if he would be saved by angels, but Jesus said there was no need to test Lord. Finally, Satan offered to give the world to Jesus if he would worship the Lord of hell, but Jesus also rejected this temptation, claiming that he would only worship God and deny Satan. God's opponent, as well as the Creator, will send his Son to earth to prepare the ground for the final judgment. This Son of Satan will be known as the Antichrist. Satan is not an exclusive figure in Judeo-Christian culture. This evil being is also present in Islam. He is known by the name of Iblis, an evil jinn born from fire. Iblis harbors intense hatred for mankind and his mission is to lead them away from God. Those who follow Iblis, turning away from Allah, will be cast into the fire of hell, where they will receive their just punishment. 
Satan is not exclusive to Judeo-Christian culture or Islam. His figure is present in many other cultures and religions, always representing the embodiment of evil and the adversary of good. Regardless of the religion or belief system, Satan's goal is always the same, to lead mankind astray from the path of goodness and justice. Hell, the place where sinners and demons reside, is a terrifying place filled with pain and suffering. According to some Christian traditions, hell is not only inhabited by the souls of sinners but also by sinister creatures known as demons. Among these demons, seven stand out, known as the seven princes of hell. Each of these demons is associated with one of the seven deadly sins. Belphegor, once a powerful archangel named Balpior, is now known as the demon of laziness. He was cast into hell for his inertia during the rebellion in heaven. Azazel, another fallen angel, represents the sin of wrath. He was carnally involved with women on earth, and their offspring, known as Nephilim, tainted the earth. Mammon, a pre-Christian deity, is now seen as a demonic figure associated with the sin of greed and avarice. Beelzebub, the lord of the flies, is the demon of pestilence and is associated with the sin of gluttony. Asmodeus, the most corrupt of men, was elevated to a demon when he reached hell. Due to his lust, he is related to that sin. Leviathan, a colossal sea creature, is associated with the sin of envy. And finally, Lucifer, the leader of the rebellious angels, is associated with the sin of pride. These demons, along with Satan, conspire to corrupt God's work. They await the days preceding Christ's return when they will take over the earth through the Antichrist, once again fighting against the Creator's forces. The battle between good and evil continues, with each side vying for the souls of mankind. The choices we make in life determine which side we align ourselves with, ultimately deciding our eternal fate. In conclusion, the stories of Lucifer, Lilith, the Antichrist, Leviathan, and the seven princes of hell serve as reminders of the constant struggle between good and evil, and the consequences of our actions. They underscore the importance of faith, humility, and righteousness in the face of temptation and adversity. These tales, while ancient, still hold relevance today, offering valuable lessons and insights into the human condition and our relationship with the divine. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the mystical world of celestial beings, ancient myths, and prophecies. We hope you found this exploration enlightening and thought-provoking. Remember, the choices we make in life determine which side we align ourselves with, ultimately deciding our eternal fate. Choose wisely, and may your path always lead you towards goodness and justice.